Really a great movie that I think everybody should watch. It's the 2006 German movie, The Lives of Others. Let me tell you why I think this movie is great, why it's worth watching and re-watching, coming up next. Lives of Others is really a remarkable movie, and one reason is that there's been a number of great surveillance movies, movies about hidden observers watching other people throughout movie history prior to the Lives of Others. To go through the list, it's a murderer's row, Rear Window, Peeping Tom, Blow Up, Blow Out, Decalogue 6, The Conversation, Purple Rose of Cairo. These are great, great movies. Part of the reason for its greatness and its uniqueness is it's grounded in reality and historical circumstance, 1980s East Germany, which was a communistic society where the secret police thrived. It's said that the Stasi or secret police were everywhere spying on everyone everywhere. And I've read that a great portion of East German citizens at that time were involved with the Stasi, you know, being informants or maybe even working for them. 50%, something like that. It was a huge percentage. You can just put it in the comments what, what it really was, but an amazing number of people were spying on their neighbors, ratting on them and trying to preserve themselves. The movie depicts a society and does not have anything pleasant or much pleasant to say about it. It features four characters who each have different moral conundrums. And for a movie to really present four rich, diverse characters who have various moral conundrums, various levels of knowledge about what each other is doing and what they know and what the secret police are going to do is really remarkable. You can focus on any one of these four characters. You know, normally movies like this only have one or two characters where there's a serious moral conundrum. Here there are at least four. I do think the movie focuses on, maybe on one main character who's Wiesler, the mid-level bureaucrat working for the state secret police. Beginning early in the movie, he is a torturer, a secret policeman who then teaches Kala in college how to torture people. And then he's elected to go spy on this German playwright who's considered loyal to the nation, Draymond. Actually, it's Wiesler's idea to spy on Draymond. He suspects everybody as you know, people trying to move up the chain or ladder of bureaucracy do. So he tells his boss, Grubitz, to spy on Draymond, even though Draymond seems perfectly clean and is loyal in his plays to the GDR, the German Democratic Republic. By Verhören arbeiten Sie mit Feinden des Sozialismus. We are told within a minute of the movie, Wiesler says this, I think, that they live in a humanistic system. And the movie throughout is going to challenge him and make that ironic because the socialism in the movie is harrowing and awful because the secret police obviously catch people, torture them, and blacklist them. In fact, shut down artists etc. What ends up happening is Wiesler runs an operation where they spy on Draymond. They go into his house, they wire it up, and then Wiesler sets up a station on top of the flats right above where Draymond lives and sits there and listens to him day after day. He takes the early shift and the morning afternoon shift and then another man comes in and listens to Draymond that night. But Wiesler gets a fr front row seat at Draymond's life, an ordinary man's life, what he eats, what he drinks, how he talks to his living girlfriend. And Visa really becomes like a movie watcher, a hidden observer getting to spy into a life, but he's not seen in response. The hidden observer idea, for example, in Rear Window, where the main character played by Jimmy Stewart stares out into the windows of people as the hidden observer, but he doesn't get observed back. Well, if he ever does, it's kind of interesting. Actually, Wiesler doesn't observe through visuals. He observes through audio, listening to everything and then writing down reports. Well, one moral conundrum comes up and he begins to empathize. He begins to understand this man's life, the man who he's listening to. What's a secret policeman to do when he admires and empathizes with someone and that someone, well, might become a rebel against the state or do something illegal? Should he forge his reports? Or should he report on the man he admires, preserving himself, but harming the one he likes in the process? Another question is, he knows enough about Draymond's life. Should he intervene in his life whenever the situation might come up where he ought to? These are sort of the moral questions and ethical conundrums for Wiesler. But each character in the movie, Wiesler, Draymond, who becomes a, is a loyal artist but finds his artists, his fellow artists blacklisted and harmed, he wants to write or is asked to write about suicide in East Germany, which would be you know, against the socialistic system, as it were. 
and would get him in trouble. He has a living girlfriend, Sealand, and she maybe she will know about Draymond and maybe she will report on him or not. And then there's Grubitz, the higher mid-level bu bureaucrat who kind of likes Wiesler, I think, and may cover for him or may not. So each of these people could turn each other in at various times. And they have different levels of knowledge about the spy operation in Draymond's home. And it really becomes this movie, should you preserve yourself? A little bit of game theory here. Should you turn in other people in order to preserve yourself? Should you, you know, keep secrets, but, you know, you have a threat of getting harmed if your secret is found out or you are known to be keeping secrets? All kinds of interesting moral conundrums here. And the overall view is a state secret police system is absolutely awful and brutal. It's fitting, actually, that there are several metaphors about whether these people can really act and have the freedom to act or whether they are constrained in terms of the system. So the puppet with strings on the wall of Draymond's home, for example, as his girlfriend gives an important speech in the movie, for example, or the metaphor of the playwright writing lines for actors and the actors just speak them because they have to, their lines given to them are in fact the state police directors of a play and every citizen is you know an actor just doing what they have to do saying the lines they have to say to the secret police are the secret police the puppet masters and you do get levels of bureaucracy in this movie you have Wiesler then Grubitz above him and then this really the arch villain maybe of the movie who is involved not just in the spying operation in Draymond's home but with Sealand and actually in my opinion raping her and so he seems to be the arch villain and he comes in later in the movie. Really interesting stuff in this movie about bureaucracy and how bureau bureaucrats act and how citizens should act or interact with this bureaucracy. The movie has flavors of George Orwell's 1984 throughout. I think it's fitting, in fact, that the first two words of the movie are winter 1984. I'm guessing that that year was not chosen randomly. It's an homage to Orwell, the state secret police system in that book and the wintry grays throughout that book. Also, Wiesler looks like kind of Winston Smith with his drab gray uniform on all the time, even though Draymond actually as the activist rebel writer as Winston Smith is in 1984 is kind of the Winston Smith of this of this movie. I think you should be on the lookout for the color red, which is a symbol of communism or was during the Cold War, obviously with the Soviet flag, for example. But this movie, I think it's, that's challenged. That meaning is challenged and it's ironized. Red becomes a symbol of freedom. Just to give things away and big spoiler alerts coming, so spoiler, 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 red becomes a symbol for each of these characters for freedom. For Draymond, it's the typewriter ribbon that allows him to write about suicides. And then Wiesler obviously has handled the typewriter in order to save Draymond. And it's a sign, the red typewriter ribbon, for Draymond that Wiesler has saved him later in the movie. Also, and this is a little controversial, but my interpretation, the blood of Sealand as she dies. And, you know, she thinks she's done wrong, but she hasn't. The blood, I think, is a symbol of freedom. Um, suicides are kind of, and this is awful to say, but escaping the negative or harmful political system. Um, this is a concept that's been around for a long time, ancient concept even. Suicide is escape from tyranny. And that's in Dante, for example, the figure of Cato in Purgatory. You could say the red, this is my interpretation, of Ceylon, uh, the blood of her, is a symbol of escape or freedom, as it were. All in all, I really like this movie. I like it better on rewatching. And I do think everybody should watch this just to know what it's like to be in a police state. And there are those situations throughout the world today where these kinds of things happen, secret police spying on people, big spy networks, citizens have incentives to rat on their neighbors, even their family members. It's really awful and sad and terrible, in my opinion. So I'm making a moral judgment here, but I think this movie is profound for that reason alone. People ought to watch it to study what life was like then and that it should never happen anywhere. What do you think of this movie? Let us know in the comments and please subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a great day.